So um, if that uh, kind of clarifies some of that information, we're gonna move on to setting our front suspension. Now, the front suspension, um, depending on the type of bike you've got, Jeff's actually has air suspension on his, so it makes it pretty easy on his. So he actually has a little Schrader valve cap right here. We just unscrew the Schrader valve cap. And it's that little shiny valve or cap right there. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna screw, if you've got an air suspension set up, you're gonna screw your air pump onto it. Basically that little nodule right there. Turn your power on. Now the one, one trick on uh, the Husqvarna's, the KTM's and the gas gases is you do want the front tire off the ground when you're measuring. If it's on a race stand just like this, that's fine. The reason why is that fork needs to be fully extended. There's a detent port inside the fork. If it's not fully extended, that air doesn't bypass through there properly, then it fills the chamber up weird. Then the fork actually acts a little funky on you. So just make sure you're off the ground. If it's like this, that's totally good, okay? That is part of the pre-ride check if you are a Husqvarna or a KTM or a gas gas rider, because eventually this stuff will bleed out a little bit if you leave it for sitting for a couple months. So don't just yank it out of the shed and go ripping off. You, you want to set that pressure every time. So that way the bike's dialed in for you. So basically on, uh, on the Husqvarna's, there's actually a little telltale rings and that's what these little red rings are right here. So what you want to do before you start your moto, you're going to pull one of these rings all the way up to the dust seal. This one's a little sticky just because it needs a little, little cleaning. So you're going to pull this all the way up to the dust seal. And then when you're out riding hard, jumps, bumps, the whole nine yards, the farthest you really want to see this compress down is roughly about an inch, inch and a quarter off the base of the fork. If you're crushing through that, and you're not at your maximum air pressure, add a little more air pressure. If you're finding you're riding hard and that ring is kind of hanging up up here, that. then that means you need that. to take a little air pressure out. <laughs> now, if you don't have a bike with this, this type of setup, you can use a zip tie. That's actually an old road race trick that we used to do. We just put a zip tie, a light snug on there, and that way it'll still slide up and down. And before you start your moto, just pull it all the way up to your dust seal. And then when you're really getting after it, you can see how much travel you're actually getting out of that that suspension and that's going to tell you how much air pressure you can add to it and you can also cheat it with a little bit of compression too because compression acts as bump absorption so hopefully that gives you some good ideas on that if you ever have your fork serviced uh, new fork seals new fluid i would definitely recommend doing that at least uh, uh, once to about one to two years definitely want to make sure that uh, fluid's fresh that way that everything's working nice and clean inside if you ever uh, have anybody do the suspension on it, have them add some O-rings uh, to your fork leg, and that way you've basically got one of these little setups on there. So I've done that to a lot of my bikes, but if you're in a pinch and you just want that, that information, just put a zip tie on it and you'll, you'll be totally good, okay? Good deal. All right, so uh, if you have a bike that just has twister adjustments for your preload, you wanna make sure those are set up equally. You don't have to have one of these on both fork legs. Just one is fine, because that's gonna give you the overall travel of both fork legs. They're not gonna twist on you or anything like that, okay? Good deal. Now we're gonna delve into compression and rebound. That's always kind of the dark art on, on suspension. This is gonna be the easiest way to mentally process these little clicker adjustments. So I'm gonna spin this bike around one more time, just so we can see a good visual on that. Because I know Jeff's shock adjustments are actually on the right side of the bike as well. All right, now everyone gets lost in the whole concept of, am I adding, am I subtracting? What's this plus and minus thing do? I'm really confused about it. The simplest way to think about the functionality of these clicker adjustments, Jeff, we need to move your bars a little bit. You can't fiddle with your clickers. That way you can fiddle with them, okay? So that's one thing that's really important. If, if you are putting accessories on your bike, don't restrict yourself from being able to fiddle with these, these clickers because you're always going to be fiddling with them. You could be going from desert to hard enduro to maybe a little hard pack, and you always want to do a little fine tuning from that point. So that way you're riding your bike, not the manufacturer's bike, okay? So basically a lot of your, a lot of your manufacturers, they'll either be a flat tip screw adjustment. These actually have a nice little uh, thumb, thumb and finger adjustment clicker in there. So we can get to these pretty easily. Usually two to three clicks in either direction, you're gonna notice you made a change. 
Now the easiest way to mentally process how these things work, even the ones with the flat tip screwdriver, is when we turn that adjuster in, basically all it's doing, it's taking a little needle and it's closing off a port valve and it's gonna let less fluid go through that port valve. And if it were the compression side, it would actually firm it up because that fluid's not racing through that port valve as easily. It's kind of like shutting the water off, okay? If you want to feel a little softer on the compression, bump absorption, you're gonna back that adjuster out. It's gonna pull that needle out of that port valve. That fluid's gonna race through a little easier and it feels a little softer on that compression stroke. So basically the way I look at uh, uh, the compression stroke, do I need to firm it up or make it softer? If I've got to firm it up, I'm gonna restrict the flow by turning the water off a few clicks. If I want it feeling a little softer, I'm just gonna open up that clicker and turn the water on a few clicks to where it flows through that valve a little easier, okay? I hope that kind of gels a little easier because that's always kind of a dark art, okay? Now, as far as rebound on Jeff's bike, this is actually a separate function front fork. So this fork leg here strictly does the air suspension. This fork leg does compression and the rebound adjusters here. Uh, Suzuki's, they've got uh, the compression is down here on both fork legs and rebounds up on top on, on both fork legs. You do want to have all that set equally. You don't want to have them off balance, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. On the rebound side, basically think of rebound as we're controlling the speed on how fast that front tire returns and makes contact to the ground. What we usually feel in the pilot seat, let's say the rebound's moving too fast, it tends to want to pogo back at us every time we're going over a jump or a bump. So to slow that down, we're gonna take that adjuster and we're just gonna shut the water off by restricting that flow through that valve. That's all we're doing. If we want it to come up quicker, we're gonna take that adjuster and back it out to where it's pulling out of that port valve a little bit, more fluid races through there, and it rebounds a little quicker for us. So when I'm thinking about rebound and adjusting it, I try to get in my head, do I need to speed it up or slow it down? If I need to speed it up, I'm gonna turn the water on to where it flows, uh, flows through that uh, valve a little quicker. If I need to slow it down, I'm just gonna turn that adjuster in or it restricts that flow and it doesn't pop up as quick, okay? Some things you might discover, let's say some handling issues. Uh, you find your bike is pushing really easy in the turns. That means your rebound's probably moving too fast and you need to slow it down by turning the water off a little bit a couple clicks. If it feels a little lazy on coming up to full height, click that, that clicker out a few clicks and see how that feels. So I've, I've experienced it before, mm -hmm. where, where I hit something like something that's hard, you know, uh -huh. you know on a little rock or something like that, it just like bounces it off like it's going to do a, you know, a wheelie. That means what, your what rebound's moving too fast. Gotcha. Yeah, it's too fast. It's just, uh, you've got it ported open too much, the water on is, is on too much, and it's just going to boink at you too quick, okay? I see. Um, so if you need to slow that down, basically you take that clicker and you close it off a few clicks just to restrict that flow going through that valve. The reason I use faucet analogies is, is people are like, oh, do I add rebound? Do I subtract rebound? People are telling me more, less. If you just look at it at operating like a faucet, you're either restricting the flow going through that valve or opening up the flow going through that valve, okay? Opening up will speed up the rebound. Restricting the flow will, will slow it down. The compression side, if it feels a little too harsh on that bump absorption, that means that, that flow is restricted a little too much and you need to soften it up by opening up that faucet a little bit, okay? So, um, on the shock, is that making good sense, gang? If, if anybody's questioning on that, definitely chime in and we can- So, so they're basically that. just two, on the front, they're just two adjustments, the, the compression and the rebound. Yeah, and but the, your first thing you wanna do is your preload. So basically on yours, let's kind of go back old school a little bit. If you didn't have an air fork on there, let's say we're riding the same bike and I weighed 400 pounds. Well, every time you came into the pits, we'd have to pop the top of the fork off, drop a new spring in there to where it would support my weight, and then when you come in, we'd have to drop a, a lighter spring in. Well, in this case, we just change air pressure. So that's kind of the brilliant thing about, about air suspension is it's a little- So how does that relate to that, that yellow, that, that red ring? So the red ring, that's not really gonna give you, a, well, excuse me. Um, so that red ring is basically keeping the bike suspended properly. If oh, it's okay. not suspended properly, it's always gonna be compressing too far down. So, so you, what do you use to, to adjust, adjust that? Is it the, you, you, are you adjusting the preload? Pre are you adjusting? Yeah. Yeah, I'll set my air first, okay. yeah, and get that set right at my spec and just go out and kind of rip it around, see how it's feeling. Because a lot of this is all seat of the pants, how it's going to feel good for you. Mm -hmm. um, if you get into your manufacturer's owner's manuals or if you can get on uh, manufacturer's websites, a lot of times they'll have a spec standard measurement to go by. Some of them might be the amount of turns you have to put on the preload. 
um, depending on if it's a style like the rear shock or or it might tell you uh, uh, pressure on on the, on the air suspension so mm. just depending on on your model uh, like uh, my super motorbike I'm a, I'm a pretty light guy so I actually set my suspension up kind of what they would consider the standard setting um, but if I, if I gained a little weight over the winter time, I guess I'd probably have to set it up a little heavier on, on that set. So there's three different adjustments. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, three different adjustments. So the preload or your sag is going to elevate the bike properly to where it's suspended properly. And then your compression and rebound are going to react on how that suspension is working for you, either returning slow or fast or the compression bump absorption how it's absorbing that bump so let's say if you're doing some uh, maybe heavy enduro you probably want that that compression maybe just a little lighter and you want to maybe slow down the rebound a little bit because if the rebound's moving too fast it's just going to really bounce back at you every time you on you like on the whoops and stuff like that uh, uh, whoops or or in enduro situations you'd be more looking over logs rocks that type right. of thing so if you're finding you're kind of glancing and skipping off a lot of those things, your compression might be a little too heavy and your rebound might be a little too fast. So that's, those are kind of some things I, I look for. So I usually, what I do when I'm out tuning my suspension is I'll take a notepad, I'm, I'm gonna write down my base settings for my suspension. Cause we've all done it. You start turning knobs and clickers and you're like, I don't even know what I did on this thing. So if you can write down your base settings, and I really encourage this, then when you go out, you can flip around, you can turn stuff, you can change it, experiment with it. If you ever get lost, you can go right back to square one on it, okay? You mentioned, you used the term base setting. Base How do you establish that base setting? So base setting is gonna be a factory setting right, right from the factory. So depending on which how do model you, of How do you know that though? I'm so easiest way to do that, unfortunately this one's a little compressed in here. You might wanna change that. So easiest way to do on your, let's say on your rebound, most suspension, the way you wanna check your suspension is you wanna turn it all the way in to where that needle seats. And you don't want to crank it in there because that's either an aluminum needle or a brass needle. So you're just going to turn it all the way into where it seats. And then you're going to count the clicks or the turns out. Okay. Um, I believe on your bike, uh, I think it's like 23 clicks out for standard on the compression. So all you do is you set it and then you start counting your clicks on the way out and see where that's at. So what I usually do on, on that setting, same on your, on your rebound, or if you've got flat tip screw adjusters, you're just gonna turn that in to where you feel it seat. And remember, don't bind it, just okay, that's the stopping point, and you're just gonna count your clicks or your rotations all the way out and, and go from there, okay? Um, when I'm riding enduro on my bike, I, I've kind of, uh, I've kind of modified my bike a little bit to where I can race it in supermoto and I can also take it and do hard enduro. So I've got two sets of wheels for it. So out on the racetrack, I need things a little more taunt to where they're not, not bouncing around for me as much. But when I go, say, one of our local spots is AF Canyon, some cool, cool uh, enduro riding up there, there's a lot more obstacles to deflect off and, and go around. So I don't want that suspension set up as taunt because every time I go over an obstacle, it'll just deflect me and it could shoot me off a trail off the side of the mountain or something like that. So I've, I've got it dialed in where it's like, okay, when I, I know I'm on the track, I'm, I'm 10 clicks out here. When I'm up, up in uh, going up AF Canyon, I'm like 15 to 20 clicks out on my compression. So depending on, on how you want that set up. So um, I really encourage people to, to fiddle with their suspension. Make it your bike is, is the big thing right there. Don't, don't ride the manufacturer's bike. But uh, if you ever have any questions, there's a lot of good resources out there. You can give us a shout at the Edge Power Sports. Um, or you can uh, uh, find a, there's a ton of stuff that's uh, information out there as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you could actually give us a shout anytime you want. Um, just so uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but there's only three WP service centers in the United States. Um, takes a lot of work to get to that point. We actually have to go to a lot of training. There's a lot of money invested invo involved in it. Um, all of the, the lead technicians here, we're all WP certified and, and we're one of the only, uh, like I said, there's only three in the United States and, and we're the only one in the, in the Western uh, hemisphere right here. So um, if you're ever curious, you can, you could even send your suspension in, we could dial it in for you. The cool part about it is we have all the secret settings that no one else has. Uh, 
If, uh, if you have WP suspension and someone else is working on your suspension and they tell you, oh yeah, I got the magic setting and all that, I'll tell you this, they're selling you snake oil. All they're doing is looking up on a spec sheet, mainly off of race tech, and they're just giving you the valve, valve settings there. And okay, cool, I gave you the super secret sauce where they're just pulling information off of the internet where we've actually, if you wanted Barsh's suspension set up on here, we could put that in here for you. So, so yeah, we could definitely uh, do, do some cool stuff that that no one actually has that access to. Uh, there are also uh, drop-in A kits. I believe uh, for your bike, it'd be roughly about 1,400 for new cartridges and a new uh, a new rear shock for it. Or I think it's right around, I wanna say close to six, and that gives you a full front fork assembly, a full rear shock assembly, and you've got Pro, pro suspension. It's honestly looking at the A kit assembly, it's the Rolex of the suspension. It's it's beautiful suspension.